Logan had a criminal history, including violence towards women, and he told numerous ex-partners that he would kill them. An ex-partner of his stated that he always carried a gun with him everywhere in his fanny pack. Bridge Guy appears to be wearing a fanny pack. She also stated that when she first seen the photos of Bridge Guy, she presumed police were looking for Logan because she thought it was Logan. She did not realize that the photo was the photo of the suspect. In total, 15 tips, both anonymous and from known people in the community, reported that they thought Logan was in fact Bridge Guy. Police were granted a search warrant to search Logan's home. The warrant states that Logan's physical makeup is consistent with Bridge Guy and that his voice is not inconsistent with the audio. Logan owns numerous guns and weapons. Initially, Logan had given an alibi for the times of the murders. He claimed he had an alibi buying tropical fish 20 miles away. Yeah, I was not home during the, the time that all this was happening. I was in Lafayette, yeah. and I didn't get home till approximately 6.30 in the evening, and then the neighbor stopped to ask for permission to look back here for the girl. However, it was later discovered that the alibi Logan gave was false, meaning he lied about his whereabouts during the specific time that the murders took place. He was intentionally trying to mislead detectives. Logan asked his cousin to lie on his behalf and claimed that he had taken him to the aquarium at the time period of the murders. He asked his relative to be his false alibi before the bodies of the girls were discovered. Logan claimed he asked his cousin to lie as he had broken his probation. He was not meant to be driving his jeep. However, Logan had been driving his jeep earlier that morning and did not ask his cousin to be a false alibi for that time period. The time period he needed an alibi for was very specific to the times of the murders. The search warrant also states, A call placed using Logan's cell phone produced cell tower data that shows Logan's cell phone appears to be in or around his property on February 13th at 2.09pm. Although his exact location cannot be confirmed, the tower data shows that Logan's cell phone was in the Delphi area in the area of the Monon High Bridge Trail. 
An analysis of his cell phone data revealed a text message sent from his phone at 7.56 p.m. on February 13th, 2017. Remember, at this time, it's presumed the girls were now murdered, but their bodies had not been found. Further analysis of his cell phone data indicates that Logan's phone was likely outside of his residence and in the proximity of where Libby and Abby's bodies were located. Logan also received a text message later that night at 10.16 p.m. The data from this message indicates that Logan's phone was likely outside of his residence and again in the proximity of where Libby and Abby's bodies were located. The search warrant was executed in mid-March and Logan was placed on house arrest. This raised many questions, but his willingness to purposefully obstruct police investigation by creating a false alibi and lying about his whereabouts including the location of his cell phone data, seems highly suspicious. It should also be stated that there is a link between Logan and Libby's dad. Libby's dad was arrested years earlier on drug charges and agreed to act as an informant. Libby's dad gave the police names and one of these names was linked to Ron Logan. Thank <laughs> you.